I was taught for the poet. Listen by a Malayali poet. And there's a pun entered. It is the first Aadhaar Liam poet. He says this poem is written by Aadhaar number 9876543211101. The Shinkansen model accelerates to 217 miles an hour, cutting journey time to 3 hours from Ahmedabad to Mumbai. Mukesh sings Meri Gadi Hai Japani in a soulful studio radio. Born post war, Shinso Abe smiles and waves and hugs like Hirohito. This bullet train is the Brahmastra of the epics, or the Narayana Shastra, or the Ramavara. Sometimes it is a Mohanastra that drugs billions of people putting them in a daze. There is another bullet train. There is another bullet train, a 7.65 caliber Make in India model that passes through station with strange names like Kalburgi South, Pansare West, Dhabolkar Central. Its destination is set in Bangalore where it rockets through a pulsating heart. This train now will pass through and the skin arteries and veins and nerves tunneling through bone marrow and muscles till it comes to rest on a magnificent spine bridge perched like a toy train in a full moonlight till the slightest breeze causes the compartments to topple into a deathless soul one by one. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not here as a journalist. And I know you have not called me to talk as an actor. I am here as a citizen of this country who is worried with a lot of questions. And I have a lot of questions to journalists too. Because I am a citizen of this country and my open, my papers, newspapers, or listen to the media, television, I am afraid, I am not sure they are speaking the truth. I see true stories buried between lines. As a citizen of this country, I see that I am misguided by journalists. Why am I so sensitive? You know me after Gauri Lankesh. But why am I here after Gauri Lankesh? It goes back to 35 years of my life. I remember those days when I was a youngster. And Gauri's father, Lankesh, was our mentor, who was an editor, who was a journalist, who was a writer, who was a missionary. He ran a paper without any advertisements in it. He ran a paper on subscription. And I remember as an youngster asking him, how do you survive? He says, no, I am alive because I am running on subscriptions. If I take advertisement every day. He knew he had the integrity to live. I remember, I am sensitive, I am worried about today because when I grow as an youngster, Journalists and editors like Lankesh had created a space where we could speak, we could find our identity through our voices, whether it was poetry, whether it was short stories, whether it was novels, whether we were activists, whether we were investigative journalists. There was a common space. 
and to see a daughter of such a man killed. I am more worried today in this country. Mr. Lankesh died. Death, I have realized, is something we all know. It's saying bye to life. Nobody dies rejecting life. They live a life and they go. It's painful, but we say bye. But Gauri's death was not that. Somebody stopped her from living. Somebody stopped her from speaking. This is why I am here, this is why I have raised my voice. And I don't speak because somebody told me. I am here to share what I see. When I travel to Karnataka during the elections, it is not the national press, it is not the national journalists who are being attacked. More is the regional. Because I don't belong to any political party, I decided that it's my responsibility to go to people. And all I did was I went to the press. Every district media conferences I had, press meets I had, I knew I was speaking to somebody about Audrey. There was a press meet in Bagalkot where I was speaking and there was one journalist who was questioning me, irritating me trying to put words into my mouth and I asked him, are you a journalist? And later I came to know he was a driver of the local BJP MLA. <laughs> and the rest of the journalists were silent about him. Buying journalists, silencing journalists, it's not a phenomenon which is today. This has happened from decades. We have seen it. But what we see is the organized way they are doing it today. None of those journalists were my friends who were very happy with me when I was an actor, with my performances when I used to write, were silent. I asked a local small newspaper that how come during these elections all the papers had the advertisement of BJP in their cover page. And they said we were paid three months back. They had booked it. And I said, how much do you get? It's a very local paper. And he said, I get two and a half lakh per day. The money is already paid for the next 60 days. They were journalists, my friends, who have grown with me with the protest movement of Karnataka, the literary movement of Karnataka. And they said, no, we are not writing anything against you. We were silent. I said, how much did they pay you to be silent? There were people who were writing against me, creating wrong news about me, spreading fake news. But few, where I had my press meets, when I spoke the truth, they saw to it that was not in the press. They were paid to be Some express their fear that you go away. The country doesn't even know I'm a journalist and I exist here. And they'll kill me. They'll hurt me. They'll remove me from the job. And I'm worried about it. We need to be worried about how organized these people are. Recently in Tamil Nadu, all the heads of the media houses had a meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. None of the papers, nor any photographs, came out in the press. This was unearthed by a citizen like me, few other citizens, and they started asking questions. What transpired with them? What did you talk? When you can make use of somebody sneezing, how come this is not around? And then they say, no, he had called for a meeting to know how my government is doing. Why I am worried today is, we have known political parties starting their own papers. Fine. In the past, we have seen political parties, people in power, buying 
journalists feel there. That is fine. But today I am worried about how media houses are working. How people are brainwashed to think, to hate somebody, to believe what is false. This is something which is very worrying. I am not going to talk about details because there are a lot of other people who will talk. But I am here again to show solidarity with you because in this time of despair and pain, I see hope that there are few journalists who come together and who are not sold. And I end this talk with a poem, a British poem, which very much suits you because you are the future, you are the hope, you are my strength for the fight we are fighting. I'll end by saying, this is a poem by a British journalist written in 1938 and a fellow journalist told me to read this out to you. You cannot hope to bribe or twist, thank God, the British journalist. But seeing what a man will do unbribed, there is no occasion. I hope few of you will not sell yourself. We will pursue, we will continue to question with smile, without fear. And I see hope and light there in the dark. Thank you.